An international group of astronomers used powerful telescopes to observe quasars and detected the most ancient quasar in the universe. And we know what this means. The older an object is, the further away it is from us. They measured a redshift of about 7.64. That means it lies over 13 billion light years away from us. It's older than Queen Elizabeth II. The universe at that time was no more than 700,000 years old. Astronomers are not good in giving names to quasars, and it is called J0313-1806. It is the most distant quasar to date. J0313-1806 is about 1.6 billion times more massive than our Sun, and about 1,000 times brighter than our entire galaxy. And it is very hungry. It is swallowing an equivalent of 25 solar masses per year. But what are quasars? Why are they so important? And how did we detect J0313-1806? How can we reach those enormous distances? We'll try to answer some of these questions in this video. A new record for cosmic distances has been registered by a quasar. Its name is J0313-1806, but from now on we'll call it Mr. Q because we don't like its name very much. Quasars, a shortening of quasi-stellar radio sources, are the incredibly bright result of an active galactic nucleus, with a supermassive black hole accreting material at such a rate that the heat generated blazes across the universe. It is commonly believed that this great luminosity originates from the friction caused by gas and dust falling into a supermassive black hole. They form an accretion disk, which converts about half the mass of an object into energy. The term quasar was coined 56 years ago in 1964 by the astrophysicist Hong Yi Chu. It is believed that the first quasars were probably detected in the later 1950s as radio sources in all sky radio surveys. 3C48 and 3C273 were first noted as radio sources with no corresponding visible object. With small telescopes and the level telescope as an interferometer, the quasars were shown to have a very small angular size. By 1960, hundreds of these objects were recorded and published in the third Cambridge catalog as astronomers scanned the skies for their optical counterparts. Nowadays, hundreds of thousands of quasars are known. They have a remarkably broad spectrum on all frequencies, from gamma rays to X-rays to far infrared, and for 10% of known quasars, up to radio frequencies. Many quasars also show an ultraviolet excess, emitting the same energy in this band as they emit in all the others. Furthermore, the emission spectral lines are very wide, indicating that the mean square velocity of matter in the emission region is very high, 3,000 to 10,000 kilometers per second. The other characteristic aspect is that their redshift is between Z equals 0 0.056 and Z equals 7.085 which implies rather large distances, in the order of billions of light years. Redshift is the displacement of the spectrum of an astronomical object towards longer, red wavelengths. It is generally attributed to the Doppler effect, a change in wavelength that results when a given source of waves, example light or radio waves, and an observer are in rapid motion concerning each other. The American astronomer Edwin Powell Hubble reported in 1929 that the distant galaxies were receding from the Milky Way system in which Earth is located, and the redshifts increased proportionally with their increasing distance. This generalization became the basis for what is called Hubble's Law, which correlates the recessional velocity of a galaxy with its distance from Earth. That is to say, the greater the redshift manifested by the light emanating from such an object, the greater the distance of the object and the larger its recessional velocity. This law of redshifts has been confirmed by subsequent research and provides the cornerstone of modern relativistic cosmological theories that postulate that the universe is expanding. In order to observe a quasar, one needs to make use of the most powerful telescopes on Earth and possibly combining them to get a higher resolution. This technique is often used and it is called interferometry. 
It is the basis for astronomical interferometer arrays, which can make measurements of very small astronomical objects if the telescopes are spread out over a wide area. If a large number of telescopes are used, a picture can be produced which has a resolution similar to a single telescope with the diameter of the combined spread of telescopes. The team of researchers led by the University of Arizona using the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array ALMA, the Magellan Bada Telescope, the Gemini North, and WM Keck at Hawaii found evidence of a hot quasar wind blowing from the supermassive black hole at the center of Mr. Q at 20% of the speed of light. The supermassive black hole at the core of this system is thought to be ingesting the equivalent of 25 suns every year, driving winds of hot plasma from the body. The host galaxy housing Mr. Q was also a region where vast numbers of stars were born. While just one star is born each year on average in the Milky Way, the host galaxy for this quasar sees around 200 stars light up for the first time each year. Mr. Q, the record object, is a precious representative of the progenitors of massive galaxies, and it may give us new fundamental elements in order to investigate their birth, and with it, the formation of supermassive black holes within them. In fact, the black hole at the center is two times more massive than the previous record holder, and its age, with respect to the age of the universe, may exclude two of the models we use to explain their formation. Astronomers are puzzled learning how this structure formed in such a short period of time. The most accredited models suggest that the first supermassive black holes formed after the explosion of the first stars or from direct collapse of enormous gas masses, and also suggest that they could generate black holes with an initial mass that goes from 100,000 to 1 million solar masses. These processes can create the first seeds in about 100 or maybe 200 million years. Later, the seeds grow until they reach the observed masses of about 1 billion solar masses through gas accretion. But the accreting gas scatters energy in the form of light radiation that could hinder the accretion of the black hole itself. It would be this self-regulating growth to impose a limit in terms of accretion for the black hole. For instance, a black hole can grow about four times its magnitude over 400 billions of years. This means that Mr. Q's mass had to be 100,000 solar masses, and it had to have a redshift of about 15, but this would be too much. As you can see, the importance of new quasars lies in their contribution to our understanding of the universe. This is the earliest evidence of how a supermassive black hole is affecting its host galaxy around it. From observations of less distant galaxies, we know that this has to happen, but we have never seen it happening so early in the universe," said Feige Wang from Stewart Observatory, managed by the University of Arizona. Anyway, at the moment the collapse of cold hydrogen gas directly into a black hole is the most likely explanation for how J0313-1806 could have grown to 1.6 billion solar masses in such a short period of time, researchers concluded. We said that our Mr. Q lies at a distance of 13 billion light years away. But is it possible to detect further objects? Before finding out the answer to this question, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve and make these videos better for you, the viewer. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel, clicking the bell so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Theoretically, it is possible to detect further objects also empirically, the fact that we now know three quasars with a redshift of about 7.5 and then all of them host black holes of about 1 billion of solar masses suggests that quasars with smaller black holes were already present in the primordial universe. The problem here is that these smaller objects are very rare and progressively fainter. This requires the ideation of new observative programs aiming to collect multi-band images in large areas of the sky. And now we want you to take a look at the summary of the draft version of this Discovery Scientific paper, because we think it's really worth it. You don't have to worry too much if you can't understand some of the following statements. We just want to give you a small taste of what scientific discovery is, and let you take part in the fantastic world of science. Just take a moment to read and appreciate it. In this letter, we report the discovery of a luminous quasar, J0313-1806 at redshift, 
z equals 7.642. It is the most distant quasar yet identified. J0313-1806 has a bolometric luminosity of LBOL equals 1.4 plus or minus 0 0.1 times 1047 EGRS minus 1 and hosts an SMBH with a mass of 1.6 plus or minus 0 0.4 times 109 M accreting at an Eddington ratio of 0 0.67 plus or minus 0 0.14. The existence of such an SMBH just 670 million years after the Big Bang puts strong constraints on the formation models of seed black holes. The quasar's rest frame UV spectrum exhibits broad absorption troughs from extremely high velocity outflows. These outflows have a maximum velocity up to 20% of the speed of light. We also detect strong dust emission and C2 line emission from the host galaxy in Alma data. The ALMA observations suggest that J0313-1806 is hosted by an intensely star-forming galaxy with a star formation rate of approximately 200 MYR-1. The continuum observations indicate that substantial dust 7 times 107 M was already built up in the quasar host galaxy. The relativistic quasar outflow on the fast SMBH growth phase combined with the intense star-forming activity in the host galaxy, suggests that J0313-1806 is an ideal target for investigating the assembly of the earliest SMBHs and their massive host galaxies with future high-resolution ALMA and JWST NIR spec IFU observations. We really hope this video helped you fall in love with science. Thanks for watching, everyone. Did you enjoy this video? Let us know in the comments below. See you next time on the channel.